Let's read from verse 1, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, from verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pihahiroth, between Migdal and the sea, opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army. That the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. pursued the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, camping by the sea beside Pi Hahirot, before Baal Zephon. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched out on them. So they were afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, do, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. He said to them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish when? For you today. Amen. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Amen. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Tell your neighbor, it is time to go forward. In spite of the situation, you must go forward. Hallelujah. So tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will have in the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, amen. when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Somebody say Amen. amen. Now please listen. There are a few principles that we're going to be breaking out tonight. And these principles will work for you, whether you're talking about in marriage, in academics, in ministry, in career, in business, in whatever you do. Now, the thing that is interesting about this story is that the crisis the people of Israel faced were not born out of disobedience. Please understand. Many times, servants of God seek to establish cheap theology. That whenever you go 
all through problems, you would have sinned against God. Go and look at yourself. Go and repent. Did somebody say, follow you me? Someone of God often established all level theology. Now, why I said this is that they carefully followed the instruction of God. They didn't do anything wrong. Look at verse 2. Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and come before Pihah Herod between Migdal and the sea, opposite by the phone. You shall come before it by the sea. And that was exactly what they did. They obeyed the Lord. But one other principle we need to understand is that God is not user friendly. It's not necessarily a user friendly God. Many times he's not thinking to, so much about your honor, your prestige, your pride. He's thinking about his own honor. Anybody who will go far with God will understand that the honor and integrity of God will come much more before whoever you think you are. That's why David was able to beat Goliath. Because he said that I will cut off your head, I will do this to you so that all the world may know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah. Whenever you are able to identify with God and align your interest to come after the honor of God, then you get what you are seeking. Somebody say Amen. amen. Now why do I say this? God can allow things and situations in your life that can confuse you, that can bring inconveniences, that can make people talk against you and make people even despise you, provided that he will arrange it that at the end he will take honor from that situation. Amen. Now that was why when his disciples came to him over the man who was born blind, and they asked Jesus, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents? Since he was born blind, said neither. God allowed this thing so that out of this situation, he may be glorified. May you seek the glory of God in every situation you find yourself in. And that's why I say to people that do not allow the things you are going through to compel you to live like a pig. Because you lost your husband, or because your husband walked out of the marriage, you have now become an associate prostitute in London. Because you had a challenge with paying your rent, because you have a challenge in your business, you now begin to do things that do not glorify you. Can I say to you that? Satan does some basic thing. Why is that? He accuses you before God when you fail. That's why the Bible says that Satan is an accuser of brethren. But to encourage you to fail, he accuses God before you. No, somebody does not understand that part. Because he will try to prove to you that God has failed you. That if God had answered your prayer, now why should you be living with a man you are not married to? Because I should have had my own husband. Since God did not give me a husband, I will live with a man. So, he always accuses God before you to give you premises to justify your sin and rebellion. So, you ought to understand that you live to please him whether things are good or bad, somebody say amen. He seeks his honor. Look at it. Verse 4. And from verse 4, you will understand one or two things. He said, Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. What is the next line? And I will gain honor over Pharaoh. Verse 4. And over all his army. That the Egyptians may know. That I am the Lord, and they and they did so. Somebody say Amen. 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 